Hello and welcome. This is Robert Schein, Managing Director and Partner of Lanky Shine Wealth Management. Today is June 8th, 2020. And a daily update I provide for my clients, friends and family. Updates as it relates to what the markets are really paying attention to. Ultimately looking through the headlines uh, and ultimately paying attention to what matters most. Today I've recaptured that in three different headlines. And uh, thanks for watching. Let's get right into it. Our first headline of the day uh, seems to be that the worst case scenario is off the table. And that's specifically relating to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, both here in the United States, but globally. And the equity markets here, as well as global markets, are signaling that. They're looking through the headlines as it relates to uh, you know, our daily headlines, whether it be positive or negative, but it ultimately is looking at the science at the end of the day. And the science is showing, um, this is even a tweet that was from uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo over the weekend saying that yesterday New York did 60,000 tests and only 781 tests were positive, which is about 1%. So that's very positive news. And if you look at the, the, the red line of all test results in positive cases, uh, and the trend is going down. So ultimately science uh, or, or this pandemic, if you will, or virus is following the traditional uh, virility uh, signs of, of, of previous viruses. Um, so that's a good news uh, as it relates to what markets are looking at. And now uh, you factor in the Federal Reserve is my second topic today. Uh, you know, this is Fed week and the Federal Reserve along with uh, monetary policy and fiscal policy working together have really come to the markets with trillions and trillions of dollars in liquidity. And they've provided the backstop as I've been reporting on a daily basis. Ultimately, if we do get the reopening that is successful and we do get businesses rehiring, which we saw on Friday's unemployment report, which is surprising, uh, markets are really a uh, tendency to, to look into 2021, 2022, for recovery. And I think that's what we're seeing here that's being signaled to us on a daily basis, the strength of sort of the US economy. Again, I keep reminding everyone that we had a strong economy before we got into this, uh, the first two months of the year, which is all time highs on uh, a lot of economic factors and all time lows on a lot of negative economic factors as it relates to unemployment, if you will. That in itself translates into the US economy can handle these types of shocks. And in fact, that's what it's proving out to be right now. In our last eight weeks, all of us together have seen uh, estimates, you know, and we can't tell if they're headlines or if they're reality. But as an example, I remember the, the, the headline that came out that was reported uh, from the medical community early on stating that we're going to have two million plus COVID deaths uh, in the United States alone, which is one death to, is just way too many. Uh, but to have two million versus 100,000 at the moment, plus or minus, um, it's a quite a variance that the market is sort of seeing through that the worst could be over at this moment in time, uh, much like uh, The Economist coming out last Friday and stating that we're going to have another 7.5 million jobs lost to even 10 million. I mean, we heard all those uh, estimates last Friday, but yet the U.S. economy added a net 2.5 million, which didn't lose jobs, but actually gained jobs as, as, as last Friday. And that was a, a report for the first two months of May. And we still have yet to have California reopen fully, as well as New York is reopening today for the first time uh, in, in downtown New York City. So it's going to be interesting to see markets. Again, like I keep saying this, they're watching what the Fed is doing. The Fed is a two-day meeting this week. And it's going to be very interesting to see what kind of liquidity they have. I think one of the things we're going to be looking at is since they provide the liquidity, one of the questions is how and when do you stop, right? How are you going to support the 10-year treasury? Uh, are you going to keep it low for for a, a period of time? If so, what is that period of time? So the messages from the Federal Reserve, uh, I think is a very critical meeting going forward because now they provided that they're going to be there at all costs. But the question is uh, how they will walk back as what's their signal to say, okay, uh, everything's, the economy is healing and what's the timeline? And, and then how do they do that? How do they actually walk back all this liquidity that they've put Put in the marketplace. I think that's the most critical sort of two days that we're going to be looking at today in the Federal Reserve. So that's about it. And lastly, you know, New York City is in first phase of opening. Uh, New Zealand just came out and said they completely uh, have contained COVID and they don't, they're COVID free in New Zealand. Uh, and they have been for, for a few, you know, days and weeks now. Uh, so there are some things to be sort of excited about uh, that there were on the other side and the other side is, is positive all across 
the United States, but more importantly, the globe, because there are other countries that are ahead of us as it relates to this. And I think from New York to California, if you're in those two states, uh, it's very different in the United States and in other, other states as well. So we wanna make certain that it's a thoughtful, careful reopen, that we don't see a huge spike and surge as a result of uh, sort of non-gatherings that we've seen lately. Uh, but we wanna see, uh, you know, keep monitoring the information that's coming out. Uh, but the market is telling us one very different picture. So it's a positive one. That's it. Uh, enjoy your Monday and be safe. Thanks for watching.